Republican race to the White House turns out to be more like a brisk jog. We answer some essential questions within the community. And we hear from everyone's favorite teabagger. And we find out just who is Waterhead of the Week. We begin tonight with a look at our future Republican presidential failures, starting with our favorite racist, pizza pusher and self-imagined cowboy Herman Cain has since decided to forego his original plans to surround the U.S.-Mexico border with a 20-foot tall electrified fence, equipped with a sign that will read, this will kill you. The sign, of course, would read in English because Herm doesn't speak any second languages, uh, to make up for his lack of a first. The Godfather has since decided to take a more effective plan, which would be to line the border with landmines and precision airstrikes. Herman has also opened several new pizzerias in lieu of MLK memorial dedication a few weeks ago, but blacks were livid and furious nationwide when they all found the doors equipped with this. Rick Perry is making headlines after a controversial new video detailing his graphic stance for guns. He was then quoted saying, It started with a little boy and his love affair for guns. Then it turned into a man and his love with guns. And then it became a man and his son and his daughter and their guns. Rick also went on record to say that I am a supporter of the amendment that lets us have guns because George Bush Jr. was. Also, I would like to point out that Bush was also from Texas, his favorite hobbies include hunting, fishing, and cocaine, and he loves pretzels, even after what happened. He was then interrupted by his manager, who told him he was just digging himself a hole. He ended the press conference by showcasing a new tattoo. Mitt Romney can't get away with a tantalizing photo that shows him and his Wall Street compatriots burning money, literally. But that seems to be the least of his worries, as he has been telling people that he was visited by Joseph Smith, Moroni, and Poppin' Fresh. Nothing says loving like my crescent rolls. The first two are, of course, cornerstones of the Mormon faith. And he claims that they gave him seer stones and ancient tablets that he translated, which spurred him on to start his own movement on Wall Street, the Keep Giving Cops Money to Brutalize the Hippies movement. When asked about the third character's involvement, he simply attributed it to the large amount of crescent rolls he had the night before. Michelle Bachman, Tea Party favorite and PC ill presidential candidate I'd like to f has now locked herself in her closet and has stated that she would not come out until all the other candidates have dropped out of the race and everyone has forgotten the asinine and borderline retarded things she said. On a side note, we took a poll and asked each other if we would watch a sex tape featuring Michelle Bachman, and the results are a resounding 100%. We're thinking it would be called One Night in Bachman with a Corn Dog. Something like that. Pennsylvania Republican and wildcard Rick Santorum was shocked after reading a poll that stated, Most Republicans don't know who he is. Newt Gingrich was shocked also today when he found out he was still in the running. And finally, Ron Paul has passed away, but no one has bothered to tell him. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, hi there. We'd like to take this moment to answer some of the questions floating around the community. You know, no one really seems to care, but we do, because we care. We care.
To the question of convicted drug dealers receiving benefits, no. I do not believe they should receive any government benefits. You do realize that the only reason drugs are bad is because the government says they are, right? Some drugs are worse than others, but criminalizing drug use is pointless and costs us way too much money. I'm going to assume you're a conservative that loves free enterprise and capitalism as much as Ted Haggard loves gay prostitutes, which may not be true, but hey, this is Mitchell County we're talking about here. Drug dealers are everything you love anyway. They're entrepreneurs, they're small business owners, they're taking risks, and best of all, they pay no income tax, just like General Electric. Women, pull your britches up and your shirts down. No one wants to look at that. Here's my for a rebuttal. I agree, unless the women implied here are 120 pounds, cut and chiseled, and with a pair of cans that could in fact crush cans, then I say yank them down. Go topless down or don't care, neither do I. Strut your stuff. However, if what you're strutting is down to the McDonald's, the KFC, or the King of Burgers, then I got one word for you, and it's called either a onesie or a burka. But hey, that's just me. God does not make mistakes. Homosexuality is a chosen lifestyle. You are not born that way. Shoot. I have a feeling that you're unsure about how rhetoric works. See, so you just made three statements, and each of them requires support. God does not make mistakes. Well, then what about the Garden of Eden? In the beginning of Genesis, God seems to be a kid with Play-Doh trying to make dinosaurs when he's not busy eating it. He makes Adam, but then he has to make Eve because Adam is lonely. What do you call that? Secondly, homosexuality is a chosen lifestyle. So Alan Turing enjoyed being persecuted by the British. Matthew Shepard enjoyed being ridiculed, beaten, and raped. If it were easy to change this lifestyle, then why would all those teenagers commit suicide this year? You know, you should go interrupt Vin Diesel's Sex in the City marathon and tell him that his homosexuality is a lifestyle choice that can be easily changed and prepare for a big, very gay man to beat the shit out of you. And finally, you were not born that way. Really? Actually, the answer is pretty complicated, and since you were obviously born with half a brain, it wouldn't be prudent to explain it to you. When someone moves into our community, we need to act like Christians, or we may never win them to the Lord. Hi! New here? Have a state of religion? Well, you do now. Hope you don't mind complete and total strangers that we are, welcoming you to a lifetime of judgment and condemnation of your fellow man. What's that? You already have a religious point of view that isn't the same as mine? Well, it's wrong. It's false. And it isn't the way you should live. I know, because I read the Bible. Well, do you know about the Bible? It's just a centuries-old book written from two argumentative points of view by two different sects of religious followers, separated by centuries. Yeah. See, the Old Testament had its heroes, and they were very credible, because there were many of them, and they were tangible and just trying to do right by the people. But the people centuries later thought they weren't powerful enough or omnipresent enough to really boost sales on this thing called the New Testament. So the writers had to go back and reboot the remake and give us a bigger character with a whole new origin story that you have to believe to this day or else you will go to the South when you die. No, not the American South. Believe it or not, there is a much worse place with even less culture, less collective intelligence per square mile, and even more trailing parts. Hey, hey, where are you going? Well, they're going to hell. Y'all catch that World Series out there? Shit, I watched all four games of it. Yep, I, was, I might see my... <clears throat> Damn. My my favorite team was Bruins. I always pull for them. So I remember one time my daddy took me out to Miller Stadium. Never forget it. Hot dogs so big and juicy you'd swear they used one hog for one hot dog. Now see, now someone pointed out to me now when I was when I was watching this game, so I like to watch baseball every now and then. I don't mind watching it. Now someone pointed out to me that the Cardinals beat the Bruins in the to get to the World Series. That kind of made me mad, but you know, it's kind of they say baseball's the uh, the American pastime. Well, shit, if that's true, why is it so damn popular in Japan? I can't think of any people in the world more different from Americans than the damn Japanese. 
They eat rice and everything. They eat rice by itself. That's gross. Now, <clears throat> that language, I just can't wrap my head around it. All the Aki's and Yaki's and soy and all that. What, what the f That bullshit. I just don't, don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't see how it works. They're, they're speaking like speak it like Mexicans it's 12 words a second can't understand what tails come out of their mouth yes I was down there watching the ball game in the living room and just I done told him not to call me while I was recording my show hey what you doing boy what no that, that's illegal Ain't, no need to be doing that well, I'd not like to. Well, give me a few minutes. Let me finish this up. I'll be there. I'll be down to down to house. You want to come on by? I right, see you. See you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Jeff called me. Want to go fishing with dynamite? So the uh, yeah, Cardinals won World Series this year. Still mad about my Bruins though. And to wrap up tonight. We'd like to dish out our honorary achievement, Waterhead of the Week. Tonight's award goes to a group of outstanding individuals over at the Oakland Police Department who managed to take downtown Oakland in a peaceful protest and turn it into a battleground. There were several accounts of severe beings and even one of sexual assault while paramedics were denied entrance to the encampment. Worst of all, though, happened to be an Iraq veteran of 24, Scott Olson who sustained a serious head injury after a police projectile fractured his skull. Thank you, Oakland's Finest. You instill us all with that patriotic fear in which you use to garner your respect. That's why you're named Waterheads of the Week. Good night. I'll see you next week. Heard that. <laughs>